Typically when we build an AI agent system, we just create some agents, give them the task, and then we perform that on our local computer. But today I wanna to take that a step further. I wanna show you how to build a complete front to back end application with AI agents involved. So I wanna show you a five step process today to accomplish this, starting with the first step, creating the front end. And here I just have a simple prompt that I'm going to input. So it's just going to build an app that allows for uploading the files and we're going to send them to a backend, which AI agents will eventually process. It's going to analyze it and then return the results. So I'm just going to go ahead and send this. And so with Bolt.new, all you need to do is sign up. It's free and you start using it right away. Now you can, you will probably hit a maximum number of tokens for the day, but it resets every day and you can continue using it. If you're doing something simple like this, you probably won't. But while this is happening, you know, what we're going to do with this is we're going to deploy this to Netlify, giving us a secure URL. And then you can update this, update the code here, and then redeploy it as well. So, you know, you're always getting the updated code for your secure public URL. Okay, so this is what it looks like here. I would just probably click browse. Just something this will be coming into my local computer. Here's I'm going to upload a PDF. And I just have it giving a test sample for now. This is not actually the results, right? This is just a test sample because we have not sent anything back yet. We don't have a way to send it back yet, which you're about to get into. Before we get on to step two, we are going to deploy this just so I can show you how this works. But you can, like I said, redeploy this when we go to update the code to allow it to connect to our backend. And so what you can see here, it has given me a Netflix secure URL. I can just open this up in a new tab. And here I have the application. Now, of course, it still has the same code. So it's going to give me the same exact example result. Okay, here we go. But that was very easy, right? We got a public URL without doing much work at all. Now, moving on to step two, we need to create the fast API so that we can have a backend that we can call that we can call from the front end. So in Cursor, I just have another prompt where I want to build a fast API application. I only need one endpoint. So it's going to go ahead and generate all of this for me. And here, it just created three files for us, a readme, a requirements.txt, and the main Python file. So here, we are instantiating the fast API, means we are starting the fast API server. We have one endpoint. This is a post request called analyze file. We're going to pass in a file to send here from the front end, and then we're going to analyze it and then send that back. However, I'm going to use a library called Docling, which is from IBM and it is becoming very popular. And so what this is going to do is going to take, it can take multiple file formats and then convert it to Markdown, which is what AI models seem to do very well with. So we're going to do that now. So here is the Docling GitHub page. So I'm just going to take this URL up here, the whole GitHub page. I'm going to come back here to Cursor and at the bottom, I am going to say at docs, press enter. And you can see it has some docs that we can add so we can have a better understanding of what we want to do. Well, I'm going to click add new doc. I'm going to paste in this GitHub URL, press enter. Uh, you can name it. I'm just going to call it docling. That is fine. I already have it here. So, you know, I'm not, I can't re-add it. I could, I could change this name, hit one, and then confirm it. And now I have two, uh, now two docling um, documentation that Cursor can use, but we don't need to do that. Well, I'll go and use this for now. And I'm going to say, I want to use Docling for the file conversion to Markdown. It needs to be simple, but update the code for this, please. Okay, so it's updating the requirements.txt file. It's updating my main Python file. I'm just going to accept it. We'll come back later to it if something fails and just have it fix it. Uh, go ahead and update the readme. And let's just see. Yeah, so update the documentation. Now it's going to save the uploaded files to a temporary location using the convert file to Markdown function to convert the file. Okay, now let's just go ahead and run our fast API application. So while I'm in here, I'm just gonna say Python main.py. And as you can see, it's running on our local host port 8000. So I'm gonna click this and try to open this. Now, this is not gonna work because we don't actually have an endpoint for just slash, right? We have slash analyze file. But if I type slash docs, now we have what's called Swagger, and we can actually kind of test this much easier with this uh, with the, with Swagger API. So all you have to do is just, it shows me that I have one post endpoint in my Fast API application. I'm gonna drop this down. I'm gonna choose Try It Out. I'm going to upload a file. This is gonna be this PDF I have in my downloads. I'm gonna tell it to execute. 
And we're going to see if this works or not. This is a great way to test your application with fast API. Okay. So that actually errored out. There was something wrong with the imports and then actually the functions that used to try and convert uh, the file to markdown. So what I just had cursor look at it again, it fixed it. And then whenever I re ran, uh, in swagger API, the analyze file endpoint, I just clicked execute. And then this is how the response should look like. So we had the file name, content size, content type, size, and markdown. Okay. This is what we have returning inside of the Python function. And then this is the actual markdown here. So like, here's like, here's something to do with a table that's inside of there. That's the markdown and so forth. So it finally worked. Okay, great. Now what we need to do is for step three, we need to create our crew to analyze this. So go ahead and stop this. And we're going to use a uh, crew AI's CLI. So a command line interface in order to create our crew. So we're going to say crew AI create crew. And then we can just call this file file crew. And all I'm doing is going to the prompt. I want to use open AI GPT 4.0, and I will give it a API key here in a bit. Okay. But it created everything we need for our crew. So if we come up here now to the file crew uh, package, you can see we have the knowledge source, the actual source for our crew.python file and so forth. And then, so what I'm going to do then is just get rid of this reporting analyst and I'm going to keep it like this. You might be wondering, oh, well, why'd you create a crew if you're only going to be using one agent, one task? Well, you can, this allows us to have more agents and more tasks to do more with this document. But for now, to show you how to connect everything, I'm just going to have one agent and task. And then you can certainly modify it once you have the end to end working. Okay. So we're gonna have one agent, one task, and then the crew. I just kind of get rid of some of the comments or so yeah, some of the comments to make it cleaner. So now we go to the config for the agency ML file. I only need one. And then for the task, we only need one. But now what I want to do is I just want to the topic. So this is what we're, this is instead going to be the markdown content. So we can change this to be markdown content and then we released a, well, a list with 10 bullet points of the most relevant information. Okay. So I just changed up the agent and the task to make sure that it gives the markdown content. We don't need anything about the current year. We'll, we can modify this, but this is just what I want for now. All of this should stay the same. Now we have a main Python file here, which has the run function. This is what's actually running our crew. So we can just, we can actually use this to be called from the fast API endpoint. So we can change this to markdown content markdown. Why is that not doing that? Yep. We don't need that anymore. And then this is not going to be hard coded. This is going to be given in. So let's just call this markdown content. And then here in the run function, we're going to pass in markdown content. Okay. Then we want the result to be equal to that. And then we're going to return this result and we don't need any of that. You could keep, you can keep the other functions in there, but we just don't need it. Okay. So now we're going to have to import this into our main Python file where fast API is. I know it's a little confusing. This says main PY. This could have been maybe named something else like, like, you know, our, our fast API Python file or something, but that's okay. So up here, we're going to say from file underscore crew dot source dot file crew dot main import run. Okay. So we want to now take this markdown content that we get back from the conversion. We're going to say, whoops, we are going to say result equals markdown content. And then for now, let's just go ahead. Uh, well, the mess, the markdown content instead, this is going to be the result. And then let's do a quick printout, oh, print out of that result. And this is from after crew, after crew result. Okay. Okay, perfect. So what we've done, we did that in steps. We, uh, we created the fast API, we imported doc link so it can take care of all the file conversion into markdown. We're passing that markdown into a crew. And then we're going to run this again with that crew. And if there's errors, we we'll, we can fix them, but now we can just go ahead and run our main, our, uh, Python file again, but it didn't actually like this. So if, if we come into here, it did not like this. We don't need to, yeah, we don't need to have that actually. That is correct. So we can try to run this again and it did not. Oh, you know, we actually, because of this, we need the dot there for the, so it knows where this package is because of how we're using this. Okay. So we're going to start this now. Now it's still, again, it's running here on eight server 8,000, but we can just refresh this. We are again going to try this out. We are going to choose a file here. 
going to call the PDF file and then execute. Now on the back end, we should see that it's going to convert it and then send it to the crew for in, for to analyze. Okay, I got it to work. And what's really nice about Swagger is here you can actually see the full output. This is actually the crew uh, crew output. That's a class type. So you have the markdown content. This is the raw markdown content. If you're using a Pydantic model, you can do it this way. Here are the outputs of all of the tasks and so forth, right? This actually gives you some information on the tokens and everything that you actually get from the crew output. So if we come back here, what you will need to do in the crew.py, you will need to from.env import load.env and then call load.env. Now that we got the crew working, we have a fast API server. We also had deployed a front end server. Right now, it's not going to work if we try to connect them together because Netlify is hosting our, our now secure public URL somewhere, but that has no idea about our local computer. So we need to ha find a way to be able to connect that and give our our local fast API server a public URL. And how we do that is with step four ngrok. Okay, so whenever you go to ngrok.com, this will be the page. You sign up, it's free. Like I said, all this is free. You don't have to worry about anything. It's just like the AI model calls, which you could also do with Olama locally. So it's 100% free. But depending on your, I have a Mac, I'm going to do brew install ngrok, and then you will have a configuration you need to add your auth token. There are two ways we can deploy this. We can do an ephemeral, ephemeral domain, which means that kind of like the, the URL that you'll get will change every time, or you get one free static domain. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. If you want to go to domains on the left hand side, you're going to create a new domain. I cannot create another one because I'm using the free version. As you can see, it's asking me to upgrade, but you will have nothing here. If this is your first time, you can go ahead and create a new domain. Okay, now back at Cursor, you see that our we had our successful fast API connection. You're going to click this plus sign for a new terminal. And now what we need to do is we need to run ngrok. And what's going to happen is we're going to forward everything to this URL that you got, this static domain, and then that's going to forward it to our local fast API server. And that is how the connection is going to go so that we can now have public URLs connecting to each other. So I'm going to click here, deploy with my static domain. I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to paste this in here. But like I mentioned in my local host, and probably if you do it the same exact way, if you're using the same code that I have, your port is 8,000. So if we come over back down here, make sure that you change your port to 8,000. So if I click enter, guess what happens? You can see here it's forwarding requests from to here or from here, from my, uh, my choice entirely coyote and grok. A, uh, URL to my local host 8,000, which is the same as a 0 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Now I tested this and instead of having localhost 8000 slash docs for my swagger, I put in this URL slash docs and guess what? It still works. So now we just have a little cleanup to do. What we have to do is connect our front end who, which is a secure you public URL to our back end, which now is connected to a uh, secure base URL. So let's do that now. This is step five. So we're going to go back to bolt.new. Now I know we already deployed this, but like I said, you can deploy it multiple times. What I'm going to do here is I say, I'm going to say, Hey, here's the base URL to connect to the backend. This is the one you, this is the URL that you got from ngrok. Here's the endpoint. I just copied the endpoint from fast API, which you can find right here. Yours, yours will probably look different. It might be named differently and that's okay. So I just copy this, put that here. And then I'm going to say, here's the example. Here is an example of the result. So then what we can do is I know I'm going back, <laughs> go back to swagger, uh, execute it, try it out. And we're going to copy. So we're going to take this, copy this, go back to bolt.new, tell them this is what we're sending back to them. The markdown content dot raw is the final result. So I basically just copied the actual result that we got back. Now I'm telling it, I also need to modify the model to receive this information. I'm going to press enter. And now what's going to do is it's going to update the code so that then we can, uh, so that we can receive that information to be put here. And we really only want the result back, but we're going to see what it does. And it's going to just update everything. We're going to test this out and you can test it out here before you deploy it. So then after you know, it works here, then we can go ahead and deploy it. And then you can use this anywhere else.
Okay, so it said it's done. Let's go ahead and test it out. I'm going to go to browse. I'm going to do a simple one, upload and analyze. Let's come back here. The LLM is started. That's awesome. Here is that. That's the markdown. Okay, it returned everything already, but there is a problem. Error uploading file. I don't know what this is, but I'm just going to say attempt to fix. And this is, you know, this could happen. I've had it before where it just did it flawlessly. There were no, there were really no issues. Uh, looks like there may be a course issue. Um, it's going to go fix that now and we'll be back. And finally, it worked. I had there some, you know, it, nothing ever works. I mean, it has worked for me on the first try. This took quite a few tries actually. Um, and what I actually had to do is uh, update something on the back end. It was saying it was successful, but it wasn't working. But here it is. I got the analysis results. This was the readme.md. The, this is like kind of the, the bullet points results. Um, it's just kind of printed out everything. Here's number of tokens, um, the status message and so forth. So what we've done now is completed the end to end. And so what you can do after you have your final, you know, after you have your, like your final version, click the deploy at the top, right? So now it's going to go to Net Netlify, deploy your new build for your front end, and then we can go ahead and use it wherever we want because it's a public secure URL. I can actually do this as well. This is, you know, in my browser, go to use the readme.md, upload and analyze. This is going to connect to my backend, which is now using a secure free URL to forward all requests to, um, to my actual local fast API server. But this is a way that we can connect to like to anywhere besides our local machine. Listen, that was great. You were able to connect a front end to a back end. If you have any problems or any questions, please let them down in the comments section below. Again, I have my school community in the description. Join and we're going to create AI agents together. I'm going to help you learn so that you can get rid of the problems that you have. Thank you for watching. I'm going to see you next video.